As someone who grew up exclusively playing arena shooters in the 90s and early 2000s, I'm always on the lookout for that classic arena FPS fix. Unfortunately, arena shooters are few and far between in today's market, leaving us older gamers craving a hit of that gib-filled nostalgia. Lately, I've seen a trend with larger channels on YouTube declaring that the arena FPS is dead, but I can assure you that if you take the time to look into these now niche games, you'll find rather active and passionate communities still alive and well today. So that is what this video is about. I want to correct this misconception that the arena FPS genre is dead, and this video is going to be the first in a series highlighting active arena shooter communities. For this initial video, I'm going to talk about games on Steam since they're the most accessible and easiest to track. So let's take a look at the current arena shooter landscape on Steam. The first place to look for a Steam games activity is SteamCharts.com, and for this list, we're going to start with the smallest community first. I will also provide links to these games and community discords in the video description. I'm also only going to talk about the games that I consider to be more of a traditional arena shooter that focuses on movement and crazy weapons. However, there are some good non-traditional options as well, so be sure to stick around for the end of the video where I list them as honorable mentions. And with that, here are five arena shooters on Steam that are still going strong as of spring 2023. Now let's start with the smallest player base on this list, and that game is Shoot Mania Storm. Shoot Mania was released in 2013 by Ubisoft and aimed to be an entirely new esport with levels consisting of arena maps designed for team-based games game modes. And while there were money tournaments when the game first came out, today the game is more of a casual shooter played by a diehard community who uses the game's many built-in tools to make their own maps and game modes. I almost did not include Shoot Mania on this list because unlike traditional arena FPS titles, it does not feature item pickups or a large arsenal of weapons. After thinking on it, I decided I still wanted to include this game because it boasts some seriously skill-based movement mechanics reminiscent of the skiing in the Tribes games. And and while Shoot Mania may not have the heavy hitting arsenal, it does have quick, twitchy skill based shooting that fans of Quake and Unreal Tournament love. These elements make it incredibly skill based, which is what arena FPS games always aim to be. Back in March, when I looked up this game's stats, it had seen an almost 58% increase in its player base with a peak of 97 people playing. At the time of making this video, there are 59 players in game and a 74 player 24 hour peak. And while I personally don't know the reason why Shoot Mania has seen this new activity, it is clear people are still playing it. Many of these sessions are organized on a Shoot Mania community discord where they have nightly games and weekly competitive cups. A link to that discord will be found in the video description. The next game on this list is the one that is nearest and dearest to my heart, Quake. Back in 2021, Quake received a significant update for the 25th anniversary of the game, which included cross-platform multiplayer with an in-game server browser, a capture the flag mode, a horde mode, a new single player episode and more. This Quake revival sparked a new Quake Remastered community which quickly grew with many players dedicated to hosting servers, events, and making mods. With the addition of cross-platform, players from PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo Switch could all join in the classic Frag Fest for the first time. I'm personally an admin of the Quake Remastered community Discord which is pushing just over 800 members so trust me when I say the community is small but mighty. Now back when I checked the Steam charts in March, Quake had an average player base of 76 and a peak of 152. These numbers don't entirely represent the community, however, because unfortunately with Quake, the player base is somewhat split. I would argue that a significant proportion of Quake players don't use Steam as their client, not to mention the various console players that are also not tracked by Steam. I won't go into detail on all of the Quake clients in this video, but there are many. Because of this, the Quake community has created hybrid servers that can host all the various versions of the game under one roof and players from different clients can all play together. If you're interested in joining Classic Quake in 2023, the simplest thing would be to get on Steam and join the remastered Discord. Link below in the description. Quake is still going strong all these years later and it will be for the foreseeable future. Alright, next up on our list of arena FPS games is Toxic, a more modern free-to-play arena shooter that hit the scene back in 2016. According to its Steam page, Toxic promises to let you frag like it's 1999 despite being released nearly two decades later. While I haven't had the chance to play Toxic myself, based on the reviews and gameplay footage, it's clear that this game is a solid spiritual successor to the genre. In terms of player count, Toxic averaged 113 players back when I checked in March and a peak of 284. Not bad at all for a game that's been out for a while now, but some players have noted that the best time to find active servers is usually on Friday nights. As with the other games we've talked about, Toxic players primarily organize games 
games through Discord. I've included a link in the video description if you're interested in joining the community and getting in on the action. So if you're a fan of classic arena FPS gameplay and want to experience it in a more modern game, Toxic might just be a fresh choice. If Quake 1 is the great granddaddy of arena shooters, next up we have the grandfather of them all, Quake 3 Arena, aka Quake Live. Still going strong after all these years, Quake Live currently has a player base averaging 243 back in March and peaking out at 528. While I personally played Quake Live when it had matchmaking before it came to Steam, today the game relies on the community and dedicated servers to keep the game popping. Reddit users have noted that certain times of the day tend to be busier than others, but overall finding games or community for this classic title should not be a problem. I've included a link to the official Quake Discord where gamers are still organizing Quake Live matches today. And last, but of course really first, because it boasts the largest player base, is id Software's Quake Champions. Now while I personally don't play this game because I enjoy a more retro experience, Quake Champions is a more modern take on the Quake formula. id Software has given each character in Quake Champions Champions unique powers that add new gameplay elements to the matches, and for those who love to unlock cosmetics and items, there are plenty to collect here. With an average player base of 387 and a peak of 860 back in March, arena enthusiasts should have no problem finding matches for this game. Quake Champions is also still being played at a competitive level in the Quake Pro League, which you can follow on Twitch or YouTube, and I will put links to that down below. While the prize money may not be as high as it once was, it's great to see the genre still being played at a very high level of competition. Now before I end this video, I want to mention a handful of honorable mentions that don't quite fit the traditional arena FPS mold, but are still fun shooters that take place in the arena format. I did not include these games in the main list because they are either lacking the skill-based movement or a more traditional deathmatch arsenal. Some of these games also have gameplay elements such as reloading, upgrades, or gimmicks that take them out of the genre in my opinion. In no particular order, the first honorable mention is Half-Life 2 Deathmatch, which still has a dedicated community behind it. Not only are there many dedicated servers that have traditional deathmatch and team death match, but there are also community mapping competitions with prize pools. I personally have never played Half-Life 2 Deathmatch, but based on the gameplay clips I watched, it looks like it plays similarly to Counter-Strike, if there were no objectives other than to eliminate your opponents over and over again. The next on this list is Splitgate, which I'm sure many people have heard of. While Splitgate is often labeled an arena shooter, I personally do not consider it one. The game's core gameplay mechanic involves portal-based movement similar to the portals in the game portal and combine that with the floaty jumping of Halo, Splitgate is too slow to be considered a traditional arena FPS in my opinion. Regardless, you will not lack competition in this game, as after Quake Champions, Splitgate features the next largest player base in this video. However, a warning to those seeking new content, while Splitgate is for sure still being played, the developers have abandoned it to work on their next title. The final game that I will add to the honorable mentions is Red Match 2. Red Match 2 is a free-to-play multiplayer game with 15 maps and multiple weapons that are more like Counter-Strike than anything else. The main gameplay mechanic of this game is that you use your in-game kills as currency to upgrade your character's health, speed, or jumping ability. And while the weapons don't make you think of an arena shooter, the upgraded quick movement of this game sure does. While I personally haven't tried it, there are certainly a decent amount of people playing this game, and with it will come some dedicated communities as well, I'm sure. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you liked this video. While I understand the arena FPS genre is dwindling, I think it's unfair to the passionate gamers who keep them going to call them dead. I hope this video helped you, and if you decide to play one of these games, or if you do play one of these games I listed, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video to help get the word out about arena shooters in 2023, and if you haven't subscribed yet, maybe consider it. Thanks again guys, I'm Salty Octopus, and I'll see you next time.